Hello everyone, I am Bets Gold and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to share with you my top picks for 2020. This is the first one. It's a glass mat. I absolutely love it because it's black, the grid, and when it gets dirty, I can go ahead and just scrape off any excess that I have with the scissors. It also is a nice size and then when I film, I can lay that silicone mat over the top of it and you can still see the grid through, but it cuts down on that shine. Up next, I've been turning to my Stark White cardstock by Simon Hurley. This is a wonderful cardstock that works really well with not only ink, but also with wet mediums. I use a lot of water on it, like I'm going to show you today. I'm going to show you two different techniques I like to use with this. I like to cut this into four equal um, shape, uh, rectangles, and this will give me a two sizes, five and a half by 4.25, which is great. You could even cut it down the middle and um, use one half as your card base by scoring it. That's something that I've done as well. Obviously, I got my one of my other picks is really good ink pads. I am obsessed with Simon Hurley. I am a bright, vibrant artist, and his ink pads are just that. These are by far my favorite. Not only can I ink blend with them, like I'm going to do right here, I'm going to show you how you can do two different ink blending techniques, but you can also smoosh them off on your silicone mat or your glass mat, put a little bit of water in and paint with them. How cool is that? In addition, you can also stamp with them. They stamp beautifully and they are water reactive. So when they mix with water, they will um, go ahead and blend, which is wonderful. So I like to really use kind of a heavy hand when I'm doing this particular technique. And I'm just making a rainbow so you can see the different types of um, uh, variation in his, in his color line. But like I told you, I really like to stick to the bright, beautiful colors. That's Breakup Blue is a newer one that he has out. This this um, Overzealous is my very favorite green in the line. I love it. And just for your convenience, if you are interested in anything I'm using, I do have everything listed down below. I have my favorite picks. It's supposed to be 12, but it's really 13. I'll explain why at the end. But these are things that I've been turning to time and time again this year. Not all of this is new. I have been in this industry for 30 years, so it takes a lot to impress me. And my attitude is, if it's not broken, why would I want to fix it? So um, a lot of what you see is stuff you may have in your stash, or if you haven't seen it, there's some truly cool about it that I I absolutely love and I think that you will enjoy as well. So I like to go back through and just kind of blend that out. Now I'm going to go and spray some water. Look at that move. Look how great that just moves and blends with each other. Really softens it up. Now if I didn't want to lose that vibrancy, I could go ahead and just dry it with my heat it tool, which is also on my list. I love this thing. I use it more than my embossing. But um, if I, I wanted to kind of show you that you could lift some of that color. So I went ahead and dabbed a towel on it and lifted it. But look at that. It still is vibrant and beautiful. But if you wanted to keep it as vibrant and just move it around, all you would do is you would just let it dry or hit it with that heated tool. The next technique you've seen before, only usually you've seen this with the Distress Oxides and the Distress Inks. That is the smoosh spray and then dip your paper in and it works beautifully with this. You just want to respect your color family. So I am using some purple with, uh, which is the crown me. And then these two other colors that I know will mix wonderfully with this. And I'm going to go ahead and spray this down right now with some water, taking that same stark white cardstock and dipping it in. And I am creating a lovely, lovely background. Look at that prettiness. Now, for the sake of video, I am wiping it up, but you could go ahead and create another one. However, I'm just doing it with this one and look how pretty that background is. Again, all of this with my favorite ink pad, which is Simon Hurley. I always make sure I get the back as well. That helps dry it out because when you saturate a piece of paper, it does tend to drop down into the back. So those are just two different ways that you can use some of his or use his inks. Next up are these fabulous gloss media sprays. These are by Dina Wakely. I actually don't 
really spray them, I do a different technique with them. What I like about these is they are basically like a spray paint only with this mist top. This allows you to be able to pile on a whole bunch of different colors from different type color groups and they don't create a muddy, ugly color. They layer beautifully on top of each other. And if you do end up spraying them all over instead of splatting them, which you're going to see me do, you will end up with some really cool marbling effects. So I'm just taking it, I'm splatting it. If you spray, I'm going to show you what you need to do regarding these because once they dry, it's almost like a glue. So you have to really take care of your nozzles um, in order to uh, um, be able to keep using them. I learned this splatting technique because I did not wipe down my nozzles one time and I ended up with clogged nozzles. So I decided to splat and I really liked how that splatting looked. Once again, I am using that heated tool. You probably have seen this a lot in my videos. I love that thing. It has been around forever. It is a craft essential. Now I'm actually going through and I am spraying with the Ruby. And I just take a little bit of water and I take my uh, towel and wipe that off so that it does not dry and I ha can use it again next time. So I'm just going to create a splatter background right now with all of these colors. And I could go ahead and use this as a background when I'm done or I could go ahead and do some die shaping out of it and create other types of embellishment. So there's so much that you can do with backgrounds that you create. I know sometimes for me, I just sat down and create a background and walk away, and then you get an abundance of backgrounds. So if you take and you can make flowers out of them, you can do um, some die cutting out of them to make some shapes and add them on top of other, um, you know, cards and, and things like that. So the sky is really the limit with this. I like making backgrounds because it allows so much variety and what else I can do with it. So I went ahead and just finished that up with a whole bunch of different types of colors and I let it dry a little bit and I ended up with really lovely um, background. The silicone mat on this, I just put some surface cleaner down on it and a little bit of water and it cleaned up relatively well considering that this was a gloss spray. Next up is this wonderful Mixed Media Essentials paper. This is an all-around paper. Truly, you can use this with everything, and it even gives you some ideas right there on the front. It is super thick. It has a very nice tooth to it, but it's not too toothy, if you know what I mean. These are some things that I have created with that, but before I show you, this is another pick. This is the Art by Marlene acrylic paint. I have my favorite set listed down below. I like this paint because it is a nice size and you can actually write with it. You can write words with it. It is so wonderful or you can use it as traditional paint. It also is a little bit looser than the regular acrylic paint. So um, it goes on um, um, a lot smoother. This is something that I created and I use that tip to draw on those words. So that's just one way that you can use it. Up next is the gel press. I like the Ranger gel press that they have. It's a nine by 11. I enjoy using copy paper on this. I did take that silicone mat off because it does not interact well with the gel press. So I have to take that off. It does great on the, um, the glass mat so if you're when you get one make sure you use it on a glass mat or an acrylic base this is so much fun to create backgrounds with i like using acrylic paint on this because i can use leftover copy paper and i actually am going to use some copy paper right now that would have been trashed from work um to create a fun uh pattern on a piece of paper. This is so great. I'm using again the Art by Marlene acrylics and then of course up on that I do have listed down below my very favorite brayer. When you are brayering on top of this you want to uh, brayer it, lift, and then pull back. You don't want to just go back and forth and to create a pattern I'm just using junk. I am using um, 
cardboard, a little teeny tiny solo cup, and then of course bubble wrap. Bubble wrap is my favorite. I love the texture. I go ahead, place that, that copy paper down on it, and then I clean off my brayer on the back of it. So it serves a couple purposes. It cleans the brayer, obviously, and it also allows to stick to my gel press plate, making sure I get a really fun pull. And look how cool that is. That is going to be die cut down and either turned into a flower or into other embellishments. I just love how fun this, this gel press plate is. I use it a lot. I'm going to uh, link at the end of the video some gel press videos for you to go check it out if you haven't used this. This is a really great tool to have in your arsenal. You will pull it out and have so much fun with this time and time again. There are so many techniques that you can do on a gel press plate. It is a great, great investment. And the cool thing is, if you ruin one side, guess what? You just flip it over and use the other side. It's so great. Right now, I'm just throwing down a stencil. It's an Art by Marlene stencil. And I'm just going to do a pull like this. And then I'm going to just layer it up. So you can see a couple, couple different ways to use your gel press if you've never used one before. But sky is the limit on this, you guys. There's so much fun stuff you can do with a gel press. And so I'm just pressing that in again, getting um, that stencil up and voila, look how cool that one is. And then from there, I'm going to go ahead and also, um, I think I do one more pull on this and then I'm gonna show you how you can clean it with, with hand sanitizer. I don't like to clean mine. I like to leave it ooky and gooky because it makes for interesting pulls. I certainly hope that, that the year end was kind to you. My whole life has flipped upside down, um, but I'm super excited. I, I started off the year really low and it has turned into a really great, great year. So my hope for you going forward is that you also can um, find yourself being empowered and moving forward and loving yourself. Um, and I know that that sounds real random that I'm saying that, but um, I, I just, I haven't been able to express that over here. And I just want you guys to uh, have a wonderful year and wish you well. Next up is how I clean this bad boy. So I'm just going to take some hand sanitizer and I'm going to just squirt some on, rub it in, and then just lift it with my baby wipe. And that's it. And it just comes, everything just comes up. I mean, look how clean this all gets. It is so incredible. You just rub it in with your hand and that's all you have to do. You don't have to condition it. You don't have to do any of that. I use my gel press plate a lot because I am on the gel press design team. So I'm, I have it out a lot and, um, I really put mine through it and it still can clean up. Great. It's just, such a wonderful, versatile tool. I've been playing with this um, for years before I was even on the team. I just love it. And I turned to it a lot this year. You do want to keep it in the clamshell that it came in as to protect it and not smoosh it. You do not need those acetate pages that came with it. That'll just create bubbles. That's just something they use in the factory. So now I'm going to show you my last two picks, although one of them has another one in it just because I think it's necessary. But before I do that, I want to get my silicone mat back down there so you can get stop having to look at that horrible glare on my desk. All right, next up are my last two picks. I used to really be into those Nouveau Dew Drops, still like them, but these are by Marlene Little Gems, definitely taken over. I am, my final um, it, pick for number 12 is the Art Glitter Glue. You can barely tell that that's what it is because I've used it so much, but you do need that extension um, for the top of it because a little goes a long way. And I don't know about you, but I like to get the most bang out of my money, uh, out of my buck. So I want to make that last for as long as I can. And that extension tab works really great um, on it. And then it comes with a special type of pin that does not allow for it to mildew, which is wonderful. And there are so many different sizes of gems in this, you guys. Oh my gosh. So it 
um, this, the glitter glue works great with paper as well as with glitter, obviously. And then in addition, it works with these gems and you can layer paper on top of glitter paper with this glue. So the glue is definitely a must. Get that little extension. Everything is listed down below for you, for your convenience, all 12, really 13 picks. And I am so glad that you joined me today. If you enjoyed this, please make sure that you subscribe to my channel. Until next time, I am Bets Golden. Happy crafting.